Thanks, guys. Um, let's see. Uh, I've been without power in my house for the last three days because of snow and ice, so it's definitely baseball season. I guess is the way to uh, to kick that off. But uh, certainly excited to get underway. It's been um, an inter interesting, uh, you know, past year since uh, since we got halted down at the Citadel. But very very proud of the group and everything that we've stuck together through. Very proud um, of the administration uh, for the support they've given us. And, um, you know, certainly excited to get going. It feels, it does feel different. I'm not going to say that it doesn't, uh, but not in a bad way. Um, you know, it, it's, there is the excitement, but you also have a little bit of the case of the unknowns as well. And, and uh, but definitely excited to get started. Uh, really like the group. We got an older group. So does everybody else in the country, um, you know, just because of the, a lot of the seniors coming back. But uh, I think that's going to make for some very good baseball games and some great competition. Um, so yeah, so excited to get down there. Hope for good weather this weekend. Hope for uh, some <clears throat> negative tests and, and get started here. Uh, Wayne Epps, if you want to go ahead. Hey, good morning. Um, I, I was wondering if you could just describe just how different this past offseason was. Obviously, you know, being longer, you know, taking into fact the factor that you're going to have guys coming back. Just um, how maybe differently did you handle things? Um, just with how different this this past offseason was. Yeah, it, it's it's certainly interesting. Um, you know, we, we, a lot we we spent a lot of our time in group work this year, as opposed to having the whole team together. You know, the whole team kind of circled through um, each other at practice, so it, it, it hasn't been the easiest to see your entire group at the same time and, and really put in those different scenarios. So, you know, it, it's been one of those things where I think I think we're still kind of interested to in see what the final product looks like. Uh, well, I don't want to call it the beginning product, I should say, um, looks like. But that's everybody in the country, I think. You, you know, um, practices have gone well. Again, we have older guys back. So, like, in drill work, everybody knows the drills. Everybody knows what's going on, so they know where to go. So that piece that piece looks, um, looks pretty good, you know. But it's just going to be, you know, we're nowhere near, in my opinion, ready to, to play. We haven't been – we haven't played three games in a row since last March. Uh, that includes inner squads. We haven't had probably three, four hour practices in a row. So it's just going to be a lot of it's going to be about trying to get ourselves in shape to even even compete and play in some of these some of these games. I do think mentally we're ready to go. I think the guys have done a great job getting their bodies in a, in a, in a great place. But just being out at the ballpark from noon until 6 p.m. for three or four consecutive days is going to be that first challenge we have to get through. Did you use um, the games you were able to get in last year at all at preparing for this year, or did you kind of wipe the slate clean completely um, with with those seniors that you have back uh, and say, okay, this is what we have. Let's let's see what we can do. Yeah, I, I think we had to wipe the slate, uh, kind of, kind of, you know, uh, wipe the slate clean. Um, you know, just because you know, it's twenty games, and in our sport, twenty games is not a great sample size. Um, but we did see a lot of, you know, there are some things there. For instance, you look at Brandon Henson and where he was when, when we let off the season, hit well over 300. He had five home runs. Uh, Michael Daly returned to the mound um, and the production we were getting out of him. Steve Carpenter in the season he was having before we let off. So you use those pieces as um, building blocks and, and trampolines. But on the flip side, um, Liam Hibbets, who, who was our best player in 2019, was off to a very slow start in 2020 with some injuries. So you want to you want to start fresh on him and just start back and think back about 2020. So you kind of use it however you kind of need to, um, you know, to be honest with you. But but again, every season's different, and and I don't I don't think any coach in America is really is really feeling like he knows exactly what he's going to get from his group, um, especially early in the season right now. Thank you. Go ahead, Lane. Hey, Coach, um, how many games were you able to get in last year? Did you say 20? Yeah, I believe it was uh, – I think we were nine and eight. Was it, were we nine and eight at the time, so maybe 18, something like that? Um, and how many uh, seniors or guys that you wouldn't have counted on to come back in a normal year, how many came back this year because of the rules? Because of, because of COVID. Um, I think we're at six. Um, that return, you know, we had we had a couple key losses. Um, you know, both uh, Paul Witt and 
and Brett Norwood, who were our middle, our, our shortstop and our, and our all conference second baseman, signed professionally um, at the end of the season last year and, and moved on. So, you know, I mean, those two would have been a really nice punch in the arm to get back. But I think we have right now currently six that are back that we weren't expecting to get back and, and all key contributors and, and guys who we do, we definitely lean on. Was there anything about fall ball that was normal? You guys did not get to have any kind of, you know, black and gold game, no inner squad scrimmages, none of that. And, and if you didn't, how, you know, what did you use for evaluation? Uh, we, we were able to get some inner squads in. Uh, we were, um, you know, I, I think the biggest thing with, and we had to be shut down, you know, a time or two during the fall as well. Um, I think the biggest thing was you never quite got yourself to being in shape and really seeing how your guys could play. A lot of the inner squads were five innings. Um, a lot of the inner squads were, you know, seven innings. We, we did play a black and gold world series. They were kind of spread out and, and they were a max of seven, of seven innings. So we haven't extended ourselves much yet. And, that, and that, that's the biggest thing that was that has been tough so far is just you haven't had that stretch where you were on the field, you know, basically six out of seven and, and, and you know, 12 or 14 days. And you played six times in that stretch and, and played eight to nine innings each time to really see your, your club grind and really see your guys really get into a rhythm. We just haven't, we just haven't been able to see to see that yet. And then obviously between um, some positive tests early on this spring and what mother nature has presented for us, we're certainly not getting that now either. So um, we're going to use the first part of the season. Look, they're not, they're not spring training games and we're going out to win them. I don't want to say that, but we, we are certainly going to have to use them as a way to get, to get our legs underneath us a little bit, really, get a better evaluation period for the team more so than we have in past years. And how will game days look different? Obviously your roster are much bigger than Mike's. Um, do you got, do you have to send kids up into the stands as well and uh, make sure they're distant that way? Cause there's only so much room in the dugout. Yeah. These are all things to be quite honest with you have um, they are still getting worked out in a lot of places around the country, you know, and, and rightfully so. I mean, I mean, just, and, you know, kind of for the people on this call, think about kind of basketball season and how it's evolved um, throughout and football season, how it evolved, evolved. And now you're moving on to Olympic sports, you, you know, and so it's going to take some time. I think some, some of those areas people kind of looked up at, and even myself, we were like, oh, no, we haven't thought of this, <laughs> you know, or um, as far as the dugouts go, you know, we're lucky enough being at the Diamond that we can expand our dugouts. We will go up into the stands. We've got some some temporary um, canopies and things that, you know, much like you saw in Major League Baseball uh, this past summer and spring, we'll be able to do that, you know, but we have the facilities to do that. I don't know when we get to other places, we will kind of be walking into and they're going to let us know, hey, here's where you got to put your pitchers, here's where your guys have got to stay. And, and, um, and unfortunately, a lot of them are going to be empty, empty ballparks too. It's just going to be us playing. And, and so, but that's, you know what, really that stuff, it doesn't even matter, to be honest with you. We're just, you know, to see another team and umpires is, is all we're looking for right now. Thanks, Steph. Good luck. Thank you. Uh, Noah, since you just had the opportunity to join us, so did you have, uh, did you have questions for Coach Stifler? Yeah, I have a couple. Um, Coach Stifler, is there anyone this year that you've seen so far through practice getting ready for this, this weekend's games? Um, that just jumps out to you, I guess, that surprised you that you may have not expected them to be where they are now? Yeah, absolutely. And we were talking about this beforehand. I, I think the emergence of, we we have some of the, what I call them super seniors who are returning, and Brandon Henson, Steve Carpenter, uh, Josh Simon, Sorkowski, um, Daly. Um, and, and they're playing very steady, and they've been great leaders, and they've done a great job. With, on top of that, we have some guys who would have been their fourth year right now, Hunter Bay has, his game has exploded um, from the catching position. Jack Schroeder has really come into his own. And, and truthfully, it was it was their time, right? It was their time to lead this team. And all of a sudden they look up and some guys are back. But they have taken on that leadership role and, and really, really accepted it. Andrew Puglielli's uh, filled in at second base and, and in the preseason done a great job. Um, we have, you know, well, before I get to the couple of newcomers, um, I think I think the lineup is going to be anchored by Tyler Locklear, sophomore third baseman, who 
play for us last year, but I don't think many people understand the talent, the ability that he has. And he, he, he could be an all-conference, or I should say a player of the year type, type player. Um, he has as much power and hitting ability as anybody I've ever coached. And so we're excited to see him early on and have him emerge onto the scene. Um, and then we have some newcomers, Michael Haydack, um, who looks like he's going to play for us at shortstop um, this year. He's transferred into us from a junior college. He is uh, going to hit the top one, of course, as well. So I'm, I'm excited to uh, excited to see him as well. And then we have we have a group of, of really talented young freshmen who need to be very patient right now because, again, you know, the roster is as big as it's ever been. And we need to get them in and figure out ways to get them in and, and, and sprinkle them in. And that's why, you know, really, I, as I sit here today, I, I can't go on much further without the job that Mike Rhodes has done when, when, I, when, I, when I see my roster and dealing with the blend of the old and the new and, and how, how, to, how to make guys buy in and fit into those roles. And I see the job that coach has done with his team. And, and really, even Bethel Boyle, you know, the job that those guys have done of just getting athletics started here at VCU this year and, and both those teams being successful, it's, it's really quite, quite remarkable. It's given me great hope and, and given me a guideline to kind of figure out the ups and downs of what these, this season has a chance to look at. And so that blend of young talent who needs to be patient and veteran returners who still need to lead and stay motivated is really going to be the trick for a lot of coaches this year. And Mike and Beth have done it unbelievably so far this year. And then how do I guess you keep, how do you keep the freshmen that came in this year from getting discouraged from maybe not playing with you have the seniors that came back from last year. Yeah. You, you got to talk to them a lot about being mature and understanding, you know, you know, the way the game goes. And the one thing about it is everywhere is backed up right now, junior college, division three, you know, the whole country is facing the same things. And so it's really about growth and development. And you got to keep them understanding that, you know, you have to continue to develop and you have to continue to progress as you're waiting you know, so that when, you're, when your number does get called, you're prepared to get in there and contribute. But two, just about the patience of it all, uh, of, of how patient you need to be, how this is, is definitely a marathon and not a sprint. And, um, you know, their time will come. They will be great players in our program, and, and they will lead us down the stretch. But, um, you know, right now it's, it's going to take a little bit of time that we can figure out what that best blend is of the young and the new. Um, or of the young and the old as we move, as we kind of move through it. Thank you. Uh, Wayne had some follow-ups. Yes, kind of, kind of off that talking about the freshman. I know one thing you've talked about in the past is the importance of, um, you know, building up competition within your roster. So is that kind of what, what you're trying to do with your freshmen? Like, okay, you guys might not get in the games, but, you know, try to get, make each other better in practice, make, make even the, the upper class and better in practice. And that's what could be your role this year. 100%. I think that's uh, that's so vital um, because, you know, you, you leave high school where you were kind of the big man on campus. And one thing you need, everyone needs to remember is, is these these young people that are in our, on our team right now did not play their senior year in high school. So they haven't, I mean, they haven't literally played for almost two years now. And so, you know, you just, in our sport, it's tough to take that much time off, you, you know, and then get thrown no, and they haven't even been the big man on campus in high school yet. And now, now we're asking them to be the big man on campus, you know, at, at VCU. So they, they usually I'm more patient than they are. And, and we need to continue to talk to them about being patient. It's fun to watch. When we do get a chance to enter squad right now, it is, it is quite fun because there is competition all over the field. And there are young guys who are very, very talented. And we want them to play. We expected them to play this year when we recruited them. Just circumstances have have changed, you know, a little bit from who's standing there next to them. So it's an opportunity to learn how to work from those older guys, and it's also an opportunity to sit there and say, "Hey, man, I'm not that far away from that guy. I got to continue to push and push him." And and we talk about all the time, iron sharpens iron, and you know, and, and the better you, the, the competition is on your field, then the better you're going to be. I think all, our, our goal is to always have our second nine, which I'm sure Coach Rhodes is the same way. The second five. I want our second nine to be able to contend for an eight ten title. Have you seen a, a strength of this team emerge um, in the work that you, you have done, uh, whether maybe it be the, the balance that you have, the experience you have with those, those super seniors, or what do you think will be the strength at, at this point, just from what you've seen? I think the, uh, how extended the lineup is. You know, I, I think the lineup 
it is, it does, it's not one of those laps where you say, oh, here's the clear cut leadoff hitter, and here's the clear cut three hole, and here's the clear cut four hole. Um, it's one of those laps where it's like, you know, one through eight or nine, you really have somebody that you're gonna have to compete very hard to get out. You're, you're gonna have a mature college hitter come up. Um, so it's gonna be well balanced and it's gonna be, you know, part of my responsibility to figure out how it fits in and how it flows. But I do think the depth of the, uh, of the batting lineup. Um, from there, um, I think the veteran leadership in the outfield is gonna be something. We, we are gonna be new in the middle of the field. So that we need to, so we need to be, uh, we need to throw the ball to the right base and things like that early on. Um, and I'm also, I'm also happy with, you know, we got six or seven arms returning that have all thrown significant innings for us, anchored by Mike Daly and Justin Torkowski. So, anytime I get an opportunity just to put their name in the lineup, you have a chance that day. So, I mean, there, there are, there are some different types of strengths. You know, the, 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 the thing I want to see us improve on the most is infield defense. If, if we can if we can come together, <clears throat> excuse me, as a unit there and play play better infield defense, I think we have a chance to then uh, let those other pieces kind of carry us. Then I know you uh, you added Sean Thompson back um, to help with help with pitching. Just how much of an asset is that for you guys? Man, I tell you, it, it's it's amazing to me <clears throat> to see how brilliant the these young people are with the analytics um, of the game today. And and Sean is another one of those. I mean, he's going to be a big time pitching coach at this level or, or in the professional ranks. And uh, he came to us, you know, a, a year ago and said he was thinking about retiring from professional baseball and, and wanted the coach, but wanted to, to get his coaching start here, um, which was something that was really, uh, you know, really humbling. And, and so, I mean, I, you know, I, I learned different things every day from him. He's sending me stats and, and teaching me different things about the spin of the baseball and, and the shape of the pitches that our guys throw. And, and so, and then on top of it, he also has the legacy and has been through it enough to look at a young man and say, hey, I've been there. I've done this. You know, here, here's, here's what you need to do daily to go through this. And, and so I think the guys really, really enjoy him. And so, um, yeah, I mean, just, just to get another year to spend with Sean, he's one of my favorite players all time. He's awesome. So, but he is, he's certainly going to be a star.